finding the right place for the things in your home is an absolute must. But getting to that point is not always straightforward. When it comes to home organization, there are some things that work and some things that don't. In today's podcast, we're going to hone in on the things that won't work so you can get to the crux of what will. You're listening to the Declutter Hub podcast, bringing you tried and tested, no-nonsense tips and advice from the leading experts in decluttering and organizing your home. Now, here are your hosts, Ingrid Jansen and Leslie Spellman. Hello and welcome listeners. I'm Ingrid. And I'm Leslie. If you're new to the Declutter Hub podcast, you're so welcome. What you'll find is that we try and find a fun factor in the serious business of decluttering. And if you've been here for a while, you know exactly what we mean. So thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to get involved in conversations relating to this podcast, it all takes place in our Facebook group. So come and join our lovely, warm, supportive community. To find the Facebook group, go to declutterhub.com forward slash group to find out more. Or you can search for the Declutter Hub community on Facebook. Well, Leslie, here we are yet again. Brand new podcast, the 2nd of 2024. The new year has started. We're hurdling already along in the new year. And here we are yet again. It's Friday. Yes. And we're going to follow on from the successes of last week's podcast when we focused on the negative to get to the positive. (laughs) So in today's podcast, we're going to talk about how not to organize your home. Last week, we did how not to declutter your home. Today, we are going to do how not to organize your home. I like this little spin in it on its head. What do you think? I know, I know. But the thing is, it's like you say, it sounds a bit like a how not to do stuff, but we do give a lot of good advice on everything that you should do at the same time as well, isn't it? Well, we hope so. Let's see. (laughs) We've not started yet. Let's see if we can bring some positivity to it. Yeah, so I think it's really important, isn't it? I mean, organising your home, you know, once you've decluttered, um, you're going to start thinking about organising your home. And it's so important to think about creating a system that's actually going to work for you. Um, You know, a lot of people, of course, social media is awash with ideas of what you should do and making things aesthetically look amazing and all those kind of things. And We just need to cut through the noise a little bit sometimes and find a system that's going to work for us. That's the crux of this is don't do what other people are doing. Yes, of course, there are tried and tested things that work, but it's important to think about the reality of what that looks like for you. So, so important, right? Yeah. And I think, you know what? The thing is, Leslie, we are all different. We're all different people in different lives and in different homes. And we can get a bit like, oh, Everything out there is so perfect and it's so like, oh, I, I want to have that as well. But it, it feels even too overwhelming to start. I mean, I don't even know how to get there. I've got all this stuff in my house. I've I've tried to declutter. I'm going to move, you know, forwards. But now I see all these beautiful things out there. And I, it's just, you know, me in my little house and I love it. But I just don't want, I can't do all this perfection that I see out there. Exactly. So, yeah, we're going to talk a lot about that, aren't we? Creating a system that works for you. But let's jump straight in, Ingrid, and think about we want to portray an organized home to those around us. So if somebody pops in, then we definitely want to make sure that our home is looking kind of at its best at that point. And what that often then leads to is that we frantically start to, in inverted commas, organize our home at that stage to a point that makes it look good. But by doing that, it can be detrimental. And you will have heard us talk about this before, and we're going to talk about it again, because it is so important to know about and so important to understand how damaging that it can be. So we are going to talk about the sweep. It's been a while since we've talked about the sweep, right, Ingrid? Yes. And trust us, we see this sweep and the sweep bags everywhere because 
we get into a panic, don't we? We have people say, oh, I'll come around and pick it up from your house. Or can I just pop in and come and say a quick hello? Or I haven't seen you in ages. How are you? And people just even sometimes randomly knock on the door and you're like, oh, I'm not expecting this company. And my house is looking a bit chaotic. A lot of things are out of place. Let me do a quick tidy up so it looks presentable for that five minutes, 20 minutes, three hours that people are in my house. But the downside is that when you frantically tidy up, what happens, people normally just grab a bag, a box, a laundry basket, something that a container, and they kind of go whoosh, and they whoosh around all of the, the sides and kind of chuck stuff in and go, I'll deal with that later. And let me put it away, hide it somewhere in a room. And then this sweep bag or box has has come has been created oh dear <laughs> and the problem with it as well Ingrid so it's a quick fix to something this yeah. is the thing and one of the things that we're going to talk about today with organization is that there is no quick fixes there are no quick fixes should I say to organize is equal to to organize your home takes time, energy, effort, thought, logic, compromise, all of the, all of the above, really. And so to just gather things and chuck them all into a bag and hope for the best is going to be detrimental to us long term. It's all about putting the effort in as we go. If you ever have to do a sweep, we always all have to tidy up sometimes and kind of put things away and put things into cupboards and what have you. We need to make sure that that sweep bag is dealt with. Yeah. So we're not saying never do it. But we're saying if you do it, you need to make a conscious conscious decision that at some point, very soon, you're going to go, you know, all that stuff that I gathered up together into a bag. I'm actually going to go through that. I'm actually going to rehome it properly. So there's always kind of, you know, we always have to do things in a panic sometimes, don't we? That's just life. But let's think about, you know, undoing the sweet bag very quickly. Yeah. So yeah. just to reiterate, a sweet bag, a sweet box is a frantically gathered together <laughs> a collection of things that we have typically put together just because we are nervous about somebody seeing our home in its natural state. Yes, yes. Well, and what sort of things are in a sweet bag though, Ingrid? Oh all manner of things, Leslie. Some important, some not very important, but it's normally always a combination of really random things that need to go in different places. So what we'll find is paperwork, we find post, we find batteries, pens, notelets, uh, we find a snack, tissues, uh, sometimes a pair of scissors. Uh, I mean, it can be, uh, it's stationary, it is food, it is jewelry. You know, somebody kind of puts something down and thinks, oh, I need to put it away in my jewelry box, but haven't got around to it. It really is a muddle of things. Now, if you've only got one of these sweet bags, that's kind of, that seems, you know, something you can tackle. But what we see a lot is people have multiple, <laughs> sometimes tens of these sweet bags. And that's when things really, really get lost. If there's just the one bag that you know you created because it, that happened yesterday, you can go, okay, I'm going to get the one bag out. I'm going to tidy it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, here's the stuff that I was working on or I need or to put away. But when there's multiple bags, things really, really get lost. It's all about where you are on your journey, really, isn't it, Ingrid? So the reason why sweet bags even exist is because we are not on top of our daily resets. And so we talk a lot about the difference between decluttering, organizing, tidying and cleaning. And the reason why you will have to do a sweep or you might feel like you need to do a sweep is because you've not got on top of those daily resets. Because all of those things that we mentioned, you know, paperwork, stationery, pens, old batteries, blah, 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 snacks. If we do a daily reset effectively in our bedrooms, our bathrooms, our living rooms, et cetera, we will not need to do a sweep because we've already, as part of our daily routines, put these things away. So the sweep typically happens when we've got behind on our daily resets or when our daily resets are not habit yet. And so then there's a buildup of these things that we then yeah. need to kind of deal with quickly. So it's all about where you are on your journey and whether you've got those resets cemented. But I think what we're saying is you need to recognize that you're doing that yeah. and what that is. We call it the sweep so that people have got a conscious kind of idea of what that might look like and what that behavior is and how detrimental it can be. 
But once you recognize that you're doing it, because some people don't even know that they're doing it. So some people think that it's a normal part of the tidying up process. And it's not, you know, it needs to be different. So organization does not involve doing sweet bags and kind of just gathering all things together and putting them in a box and forgetting about them. Because as Ingrid says, what we do is we find that in 10 of these sweet bags, these are all the things that we have lost. They end up in a sweet bag and then we go out and we rebuy it. We buy duplicates. And so we all kind of joins together to make everything, to make us basically slip backwards in our decluttering journey. So that's, if there's one thing that we really, really, really need to avoid when it comes to organizing and tidying our homes, it's the sweep. You know, spend a little bit more time if possible. Or as I said before, if it's unavoidable because you're like, I've got 10 minutes, someone's coming round, make sure that you make a conscious decision once they've left that that sweep bag needs to be tackled properly. Yeah. So sometimes we have to undo things. Of course we do. That's normal life. But make a conscious effort not to just shove it into an understairs cupboard and forget about it for the next 12 months because that's going to have a, you know negative impacts on the rest of your decluttering journey. Yeah. So avoid the sweep is the yes. first thing how not to organize your home. Absolutely. And the second thing, we already talked a little bit about containers and boxes and things like that and a place for things. That is really crucial as well that you start to find homes for the items in your home. You need to find a place where those empty batteries go, where that loose change goes, where the pens go, where the snacks go. I mean, snacks is quite normally obvious, right? Either in your food cupboard. No, what is it with the snacks? <laughs> Just because I mentioned snacks, like I'm, I'm really hungry. Well, let's see. <laughs> like that's twice you come up with snacks. What kind of snacks are you finding? Like these breakfast bars or little? Maybe it's because um, you know, little chocolate. <laughs> Chocolate, maybe my head's in chocolate. I you don't know. know. What? Once, once the snack's out the snack cupboard, it's literally gone within like <laughs> seconds. It's not <laughs> hanging around for me for it to be found in six months' time. Once I've I made a conscious decision that I need a snack, it's gone. You know what I mean? <laughs> What are you saying that you've got snacks? Oh, I might just put that well, up it's first really, in yeah, case it's, I get peckish. It's yeah, but it's big, yeah, but I, th that is true. Be I do carry uh, when I go out or something. I do always bring a snack of some sort. It can be a piece of fruit as well, or like a breakfast bar, or some nuts or something. It doesn't have to be chocolate, but that's the first thing, of course, that came to mind. But because I kind of. I don't know. I have to be careful with my, sometimes I, I can like, oh, I'm feeling a bit, oh. and you know how I get when I get hungry. Know, she's, making it, she's making it sound like she's got some kind of medical <laughs> condition like diabetes or whatever. You're just hungry and get get hungry when you <laughs> can't, you, you don't need to keep on top of your sugar levels, Ingrid. I'm sure you'd be <laughs> fine bobbing out to the bakeries for half an hour without a snack to go <laughs> alongside it. But anyway, I just... I know. I know. Food, the food is an important part of my life. I mean, you know this. I mean, we went out a while back and the first thing I was, are we doing lunch? Are we doing dinner? What's, what's, what's the deal here? I know. Ingrid was like, are we eating today? I'm like, literally, we've met at two o'clock and I've told you we're going to be here till midnight. Of course we're eating. You know what I mean? Like, my life would not be worth living if we didn't eat in like a <laughs> 10 hour period. <laughs> Um, but anyway, but you'd be okay because you've got your snacks with you. Exactly, exactly. There's anyway, always... <laughs> anyway, completely off topic. Exactly, as, as we do, as is our want. Um, we were talking about storage containers, and we one storage container is not the other, is it, Leslie? Let's be honest. I think even before we get to that process of one storage container is not another, we've got to think about where buying or acquiring a store or choosing in fact if you've still got some in your house and we would love you to have storage containers already in your house and not to have to go buy them where does that come in the process of organization yeah. and so we are naturally we are drawn to finding the perfect aesthetic look for our home because everything over social media in magazines and so on is kind of directing us down that route of decluttering and organizing and buy these fancy containers to make it look nice and to label them and blah, blah, blah. And that is absolutely part of the process. But we can't jump too, too far ahead. And that's the problem that a lot of people have when they're organizing their home mm -hmm. is that they're thinking about the storage container before they put the hard graft in, which is basically what you've got to do, which is to declutter, to categorize, to gather like with like, to look at shapes and sizes and types of things and what type of storage is going to be the most appropriate. Do we need square sides? Do we, is round okay? 
do we want glass? Are we bothered about the sort of, you know, glass versus plastic? You know, what's going to be versatile? What's going to work in our bathroom when we look at, you know, kind of um, humidity, all of those kind of things. That comes further down the line once we've got a handle on our stuff. And the problem that we see over and over and over again is that people are deciding that they want to do a decluttering project and er too early in the process going out and jumping on the bandwagon of buying appropriate storage for it yeah. and then making mistakes. That's what we see, getting the wrong storage container for the wrong thing. Yeah, I know. I think that's exactly, Leslie. People think that buying storage containers will solve their clutter problem. Yes. They just think if I put my clutter in boxes that are nicely labeled and I put somewhere, then all my clutter problems are solved. But we know that actually buying storage containers far too early is just going to actually get you in more of a muddle. But all of these storage containers are going to have to be put somewhere. And it's exactly what you say, because people haven't done yet their decluttering. They haven't thought yet about, okay, what do I want to keep in my house? Where am I going to store it? How am I going to store it? What would be a good container for that? Do I like things with lids or without lids? Do I want a label or not? And all of these things that that comes while you're working through the process of decluttering and organizing. And that storage container is the last one of the last steps in that cycle and not the first one. You know, it's and, and I think that's a, a mistake that people think as long as I buy loads of different containers, I'm going to be fine, but it doesn't help anything. I'd like to sort of talk about the difference between a temporary storage container and mm. a permanent storage container as well, because you do need containers whilst you are going through the process of decluttering and organizing your home. Otherwise, it's tricky to navigate logistically. Yeah. So you kind of need, you know, we're big advocates of collapsible crates. We can use cardboard boxes. We can use um, sturdy bags, like we call them bags for life here in the UK. All of those things are kind of useful to gather like with like to kind of keep things together so you've got a feel for what it is that you're working with. And so because if you had every item from a living room all jumbled up on a floor and you had to just leave them side by side on a floor, you couldn't go about your daily business, basically. So you mm. need to have some kind of orderly process in place because the chances are that, you know, if you've got a very full home, this is not going to be something you're going to do in one session. So you're going to need to use the kitchen, use the bathroom, use the living room, whatever that is. And so, you you know, we do need to think about temporary storage containers. And the problem is often if we have a very full home, that all of our storage containers are full. And so we need to think about something temporary that's going to work. So, but the key to that is temporary. And so you need to think about what have I got that I can use? Can I, you know, amalgamate, you know, things into bags that are already in containers so I can use these storage boxes. And so you do need some kind of container to allow the process to evolve. But what we don't need is the beautiful one that you spend time looking at, sourcing, measuring, evaluating later in the process. When we're working with clients, Ingrid, we can have done, if we were doing a, a very full home, we could be four or five, six sessions in before we're even thinking about storage yeah. and then at that point we'll really you know sort of dig deep and go let's have a look let's have a look online let's go out let's feel it let's touch it let's look at the sides and what sort of size and shape they are is it going to house 20 of those specific things that you've got in your home so it's quite it's quite um intricate to get the right box and if you just go out and go oh i'm going to go and do an ikea trip this weekend i'm going to grab boxes that look as if they're going to work then that's not that's not going to work so how not to organize your home is don't run out and buy storage containers before it's the right time and you might have to make do with a bit of cardboard bit of this bit of mismatched things dragging things from the garage that have not seen the light of day for 10 years you know, all those kind of things yeah. but ultimately the benefits are going to, you're going to reap the rewards later by getting the right box at the right time yeah and of course you know to buy new storage is costly as well. And so it might not be immediate. It might be something that evolves over time. You might have to buy one or two boxes a month or whatever that might be. Mm. 
So storage and where that fits into the process is really misunderstood, isn't it, Ingrid? And one of the biggest problems uh, when it comes to organizing your home. You know, it's so funny, Leslie. It uh, you were you were t- talking about it, and I thought my mind took me to. Um, that I always have an area where I keep storage boxes that I find with my clients. Yeah. And one box, even if it's temporary, it's just not the other, is it? You know, if I find a shoe box, I'm like, oh, this is good. Let's keep it. It's, if it's a shoe box that you can take the lid off completely and back on, that's like, yeah, that's a keeper. We, we're going to use that at some point somewhere, even if it's temporary. But if it's a shoebox with the lid attached and it kind of flaps open, a lot of them have trainers in them. I'm like, go. That is not helpful because you can't tuck the lid under. You can't, you know, it doesn't. Why I would just, I would just cut the lid off. I don't know. I just, I just don't like no. that. And then it's, it's just flaps open. I think so. No, for me, it doesn't if work. If I needed a box, I would, I would, I would just get my scissors and I would. If I, if True. I absolutely, if getting a box meant that I didn't have to go out and buy new, I would. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Okay. Yeah, I completely agree with you. That for me, the using temporary storage is always better than randomly buying a storage box from a shop yeah, at, yeah, at yeah. that moment. You know, the nice the the buying and the getting the really good container is is is, is far later. But some of the boxes are just too big, right? Because card a cardboard box that is smaller is normally much handier because People that keep really big Amazon boxes or TV boxes or whatever, they're too big. They're too big and they're too clunky in size. They're they're prone to putting too much stuff in. So even one temporary storage box is not the other, I think. Can I talk about boxes then, Ingrid? Because I can can imagine people now, and particularly people who like to repurpose things, Mm -hmm. will be listening to us now talking about the fact that you need temporary storage to go through the decluttering process and automatically go into a place of, right, okay, every Amazon box that comes in, I need to keep in case I do a decluttering project. What do we think about that? Slightly off topic, but relevant, right? I know, I know. Oh, please, please, please declutter. (laughs) Yeah. So what we're talking about is while we're going through the process and finding things that already exist in your home, keep hold of them as part of the decluttering process, a part of that process. We we will always gather things together. Ingrid and I, when we're working with clients, we'll always go, there's a useful storage box. We don't know what we might need at some point in the future when we get to room number eight. And so we are going to keep those storage boxes to one side but as soon as the whole house is decluttered and organized, those excess sto- excess storage boxes are going to go, right? And we're not going to keep them. They're going to get decluttered along with the rest of the stuff that's going out of the house because they're surplus to requirements at this moment in time. Yeah. So don't keep boxes unless you absolutely know that next week you are going to need them. Don't keep them forever because yeah. that's just going to add to your clutter problem. Yeah. So people are keeping boxes everywhere appliance boxes this box amazon boxes bubble wrap stuff and it's just like too much right and the 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 thing is what we typically know is that people who have clutter are getting boxes of stuff through the post quite regularly (laughs) and so there's going to be a throughput of stuff which is going to mean that you're always going to have an odd box turning up at your door yeah and so please kind of drill down on the uh, amount of boxes that you keep yes yes Yes, because once once the storage boxes get decluttered, Leslie, we know we're getting we're nearing the end. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, let's go for a break, and after the break, we've got some more um, uh, ideas about how not to organize your home. Welcome back, everybody, to your podcast about how not to organize, and we've been talking about the sweep. And we've been talking about boxes and I know it's incredible. We can talk for ages about boxes, but it's really, really important that you get the right box. But there are other things as well, right, Leslie, that we uh, need to kind of not do when we're organizing. Yeah, there's one thing. I think, you know, it's interesting, really. I was on a, I was a guest on a podcast then a little while ago and it just came out this last week and I was listening to it and she's talking about, you know, what's the biggest the biggest sort of threat that's wrong the biggest problem like with the kind of professional organizing industry and I was was, and it's a tough decision it's a tough question really about what's what's the most difficult but I think and we are part of this as well so it's an interesting one 
But it, it's kind of social media presenting something to the world as to how things should be, yeah? So, like, trying to create something that looks amazing or looks perfect or is a great hack or is a quick fix because we naturally go to things that are easy, don't we? So if if we think, do you know, I want to declutter my home and that person over there on social media says that I can do it in this time or in this way and I like that idea because that sounds quick and easy <laughs> as opposed to hard work and structured <laughs> and laborious, I'm going to go to that. Or I'm going to like think that's a great idea. And so uh, one of the biggest threats to the industry is that is suggestions that this is easy. The bottom line is decluttering and organizing your home is not easy. It's complex, it's difficult, it's tricky, it's hard emotionally, and it takes time and effort and energy. That's the reality of it. And so don't go down the quick fix route. And one of the things that, that gets talked about all the time on social media is this idea of turning hangers around. What do we think about that, Ingrid? I I know. I, I don't know who thought about this. It's like it's been out there for for I don't know how long, but I've never even done that. So what what is whole hanger turning around situation? So basically what people say is when you've got a hanging wardrobe, you hang your shirts and your tops and your trousers and you hang them on a hanger, you put them in the wardrobe with the hangers all facing the same way. So you put them in so you can easily take the hanger out. So what the idea then is, is that a lot of people say, oh, but I want to declutter clothes that I haven't worn in ages. So somebody has thought of the hack. You know what? Why don't you then turn your hangers around, the metal part of your hanger, turn the hanger around and as soon as you've worn it you put it back on the hanger on the right way and then after six months all the hangers that are still backwards you know you haven't worn these clothes so they can be decluttered did i explain that right yeah. leslie yeah i think so yeah so you put yeah exactly but to me that's so fundamentally flawed on so many levels yeah and I think we were talking about, you know, the reason why I, I spoke about the, this, one of the biggest problems in our industry at the moment is these kind of quick fixes and stuff. As well as being quick fixes, which that is not because it's a six month process for a start. There's also the idea that people will be who are cluttered and sort of disorganized and struggle with that kind of thing are meticulous enough to remember to do that in an already busy, chaotic home. And that that's going to work. So I think the problem is that the people that are looking at stuff like that on Instagram or Facebook or whatever are the very people who want to change, but they're also the very people who would struggle with that process. And what we're saying is you can look at an item and you can have a good feel for when you, you know, if it was five years, if I looked at something, I might go, oh, I don't think I've worn that in three years, for example. And in some instances, that will be absolutely fine. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, like I'm not bothered that I've not worn it for three years. I know that at some point in this instance or whatever, on a with a fair wind, I'm going to wear it. So you can make a val. You need to be able to make a value judgment on these things. It's not a time based thing. That's my problem. Is why should we throw away something that we haven't worn for six months? Why? Yeah. Like, well, who says? Who says that that's the the right time scale? Do you know what I mean? Agreed. So I think there's so much wrapped up in that hanger situation. A, why six months or 12 months or whatever arbitrary time stamp somebody has decided is the right thing for you to do. And then layer on top of that, the fact that the very people that are kind of out of control in principle with their wardrobe have got enough control to remember every single time they take something on and off that it goes back the other way around in their wardrobe. And layer on top of that, the fact that the whole idea of us falling back in love with our wardrobe is that it, it it functions well. So we're now putting hangers on the wrong way, which makes them more difficult to get off the rail. Yeah. So we're creating barriers. That means that's a bit of a faff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And the bottom line is most of these wardrobes are probably bulging at the seams anyway, and you probably would struggle to get them in backwards. <laughs> so there's so much wrong with that idea in my I head. Know. 
Yeah. But if you are a not cluttered, not disorganized, have got a really good handle on your wardrobe and, and your laundry you to, and, and your, your laundry. laundry and you want to put an arbory timestamp of six months on something, go for it. But the problem is that the people that are watching these things and reading these things on social media are people that wouldn't be able to probably maintain that system. Yeah. And so, but it sounds like a really, it sounds like it's going to fix itself, doesn't it? It's like, oh, oh, so all I need to do to declutter my wardrobe is I need to follow this thing where I turn the hangers around. Easy, yeah. two second decision. And in six months I can go, okay, but when is the six month going to come? Like, when mm-hmm. is that? <laughs> You still got to go through all the stuff that's the and work out. Oh, now did I wear it and not turn the hanger around, or does it? It's fraught with complication, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I completely. I think this is really one of our my soapboxes. I, I really just, I'm like, I don't even know why people think that is a good idea. I mean, you know, you've, there's lots of different ways you can organize a, a a wardrobe. You can organize by color. You can organize by sleeve length. Then you can organize what uh, different ways. But whatever you do, this whole hanger turning around situation is like, I don't even know. I mean, I think I can say I'm a fairly organized person. And so are you, Leslie. We wouldn't even dream of doing this because we know that although we are very organized, we would even go, oh gosh, what? Oh, I did wear that. I forgot it. And it is like, and people already who were struggling with laundry, with folding, with ironing, with getting stuff off the floor, dumping grounds. And then they also have to think about, did I turn the hanger around or not? I mean, it's like, really? You know, you can't, you know, you struggle to find your keys in your phone three times a day. And then you think you can also do a, a hanger hack. By, t- <laughs> by turning your hangers around. Let's start at the basics here. Let's start at the beginning and let's first decide from your wardrobe, what do you actually like to wear? What fits? What what do you feel good in? What looks good on you? That's the first step. Not, oh, this sounds like a great idea. I'm going to spend my Sunday afternoon turning my hangers around because that's going to be the thing that's going to change my life. no. The thing that's going to change your life is to slowly but surely break everything down into small manageable chunks, look at your clothes and everything else in your house, one one item, one category at a time and go, okay, what in this stuff do I love to keep? What do I wear? What do I love? What makes me feel good? That is going to go in the wardrobe. And then you get rid of floor drops, of ha- you get rid of, of bench drops and, ha- and and exercise drops and all of those things. <laughs> and then you can go, right, okay. I feel like there might be people who don't know what a drobe is. Uh, you know, <laughs> we're the beginning of 2024. I can guarantee we've got new listeners. So maybe we need to explain <laughs> what, <laughs> why we've taken the word floor drobe, which they might have a chance of knowing about, and changed it to banister drobe and bench drobe. Go for yeah. it. Because, you know, a lot of people know what a floor drop is, right? You you wear something, you can't really cram it back into your wardrobe. It gets into a chair, it becomes a chair drop, it gets dropped on the floor, it gets a floor drop. But when we <laughs> when we talked about this before in our challenges or in our podcast, people said, but, oh, I don't have a floor drop or a chair drop, but I've got an exercise machine in my, in my room and that's where all the clothes hang over. So I've got an exercise drop or... I've got a banister and, and I'm going to put my clothes over my banister. So it's a banister drope. Or it's That's a, Ingrid's got that. Ingrid's I've got, got that. that. Uh, <laughs> oh, there's a door drope. People hang stuff over their doors or, or on hooks behind their door. There's loads of random clothes that half worn, not worn, definitely worn. It's, nobody <laughs> knows. It, it, the thing is, when there's a drope of any kind and the list is endless of things that we can think of, it means that the laundry, the putting away, the getting cycling through the wearing of clothes is somewhere, it, it, there is, it's somewhere it just does not work properly. And that's why you get drops. Yeah. So I think we've safely expressed that we don't like the turning hangers around hack as yes. an organizational tool. Yeah. Um, so we are all about taking an item out of your wardrobe and having an emotional response to said item that will allow you then to make your decision about whether you want to let go of it or keep it for another round of decluttering. Yes. Or in exactly. fact, keep it for the rest of your life. Yes. 
Have you got clothes you that you've seen? Have, have you had clothes that you've had for a very long time, Leslie? I have. There's a couple of bits that I've had for a very long time. You know what? I wore a dress the other day, and I feel like it's probably 10 years old. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I definitely didn't wear that in the last six months. Yeah. But I wore it. You know, when I see it, I'm like that I don't, because sometimes I don't remember how long I've had clothes. And then I'm looking at a picture and I'm going, my word, this is a picture from like seven years ago. I had that same top already then. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I to be fair, there's not much. I do, I do have a throughput of clothes. To be fair, I, mean, I declutter a lot and I buy, I buy new. But there are some things that are kind of classics that yeah. I think. Uh, but you know, this whole six month thing drives me completely insane. Yeah, time stamps, <laughs> by the way, and just in case you didn't realise already. Yeah. Right. Okay. So let's go on to it. it follow, this follows along the same lines, right, Ingrid, with yeah. us following other people's ideas of what the right thing is to do in our home. And we are very, very keen. At the end of the day, the, you're listening to this podcast, probably most people, not everybody. Some people love to declutter and love to think about it. Some people are, are very on top of it and just want to fine tune and listen in. Most of the people in our world are generally on the cluttered side, on the disorganized side, on the chaotic side, on the struggling side. Okay. And so, but what we find is that you home in on these ideas, like the, the sort of hanger thing to kind of follow things that are designed for people that are super organized and think, oh, that's a nice idea. Look at that beauty. Who doesn't love to watch folding videos of things looking incredible in drawers and vertical folding and fancy things and tucking things in? And, you know, it, it, it's therapeutic to watch. It looks nice. But sometimes what we see is that people are spending too much time worrying about the folding of the knickers in the knicker drawer when actually you've got this whole house full of clutter that needs to be tackled way before you worry about folding your knickers. And so what we're talking about here is micro-organization. This is what we call it. So you've got macro-organization, micro-organization. There comes a time in life in your decluttering journey. It would be amazing to get to micro-organization. That's the goal. That's the long-term goal. That's where Ingrid is. I'm kind of there in some things, but not really that bothered about it. You don't have to get there if you don't want to. But I think so it's nice to have as a goal to go, do you know what? I'd love to be able to fold my knickers and have them vertically stacked like that in, in my drawer. But perhaps I need to tackle the out of date stuff in my kitchen first. And so don't home in on micro organization before the time is right is what we're saying. Yes. But I think we can be forgiven for going down that route because of everything that we are shown on social media. And yes. so I think don't look for Insta perfect is what we're saying. Yeah. And I think what we see that a lot uh, over the last couple of years is all people making their pantries beautiful with all of these containers and they're making their laundry rooms. I mean, I would love a laundry room, but I mean, you know, they you see all these laundry rooms with all of these containers with their, their washing powders and their washing equipment and all of the beautiful or fridges have, have been rich scaping is a whole thing since the last last year the year before when everybody buys all these containers to make to decant stuff that is that you buy in boxes or in glass or containers in the shops and then you put it in a beautiful plastic container with a beautiful label on it and people think oh it look it, it looks amazing you know i mean i'm not gonna it, it looks beautiful but wow, so much work, so much work goes into that, Leslie. And people who are cluttered, why do you give yourself all of that work of decanting stuff like cereals and rice and laundry products and cookies and, and, and sweets and all of the things into all of these containers to then not being able to find them because your house is chaotic. I mean, the bottom line is most people haven't even got space to be able to containerize and decant things into. Yeah. You know, you're trying to squash your stuff in your cupboard, to be fair, aren't you? And make it a little bit orderly for the most part. Yeah. You know, some people have got big kitchens, fair enough. Do you know what I mean? And so you can do that. I mean, I, I, you know, it's an interesting one really, isn't it? Because I was always, I wasn't, it's not that I've been, ever been anti-decanting cereals, but I think I, you know, I got to a stage where I'm like, I'm, I have to, I've got too much going on. I've got three kids at home. I've got to do all these things. I've got to run a business. I've got to, 
I haven't got time for doing that. But recently, as 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 some of my responsibilities have kind of decreased, i.e. looking after children, because they're all grown adults now, I got to a stage where I got a new kitchen and I decided that the time was right. And I was going to decant certain things in my kitchen because I've got a new pantry, you know, so in as part what well, it was one of my goals, right? So before I just had normal cupboards and it just wouldn't have worked because things were up high in a wall cupboard and but then I purposely got a, a pantry cupboard and now I've got glass containers that I use and I decant certain things and it's lovely and I thought I thought it through and I now do that but it was only now at 55 that I've done that and I've had the time in my life to actually think about doing that and I'm a professional organizer who should in principle be bothered about those kind of things but the 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 way that I come into these things is, you know what, it's got to be practical, it's got to be sensible, it's got to be achievable. And it was not achievable for me to fit that into my week until very recently. Yeah. But now it is, like just in the last year or so. You know, Ingrid spends time, she loves it, finds it therapeutic. Some people love that kind of thing. And if that is you, then that's great. But you have to fit that into other things. You have to assess your whole week and go, okay, I've got three... I was, I don't know, three hours a week. That's a just a random number that I can put towards organization and decluttering in a week because I've got all these other things that I need to do. Where am I going to invest my time best? Is it going to be decanting cereals and getting that one little part of my world perfect? Or is it going to be to look at the bigger picture and to start to get stuff out? And so there comes a time and a place when it does work and that might be after a year of doing a decluttering journey you might go now I'm ready to fold my knickers or to decamp my cereals or it might be like me where you've done 20 years of kind of household you know perfectly organized decluttered home but think okay I've got a little bit of extra time now where when the groceries come in on a on a um, Saturday morning I can spend half an hour decanting a few bits and pieces. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And I've got a little bit of space for overflow. Yeah. But but it's only certain things. I am not doing that with my washing powders and my dishwasher tablets and my do you know what I mean because I've not got space for that who's got yeah space and for I think that? even especially with the washing powders Leslie, you have to be really careful especially when they're small children because yeah. of course if they can reach all these uh, plastic and glass containers that are open that's why they've got all the child locks right on the on the yeah, especially yeah, yeah. on the on the washing powder because of course they 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 have chemicals in them so I think a lot of the the washing machine people are like please stop decanting stuff because, unless you can really put it safely away and high yeah. up because it can be dangerous. Yeah. And I don't know. I just, I just think stuff gets eaten so fast in my house. Leslie, sometimes there's no point in putting it in a decanter <laughs> because by the time. <laughs> exactly. But it does look beautiful. Yeah. You know, so I look at it on Instagram and go, oh, just how nice that looks with yeah. all the little, all the little crisp. But who's got time for that? I know. Got, I, can't, I think there was a thing on Stacey. I love Stacey Solomon. I think she's like amazing. She's like literally pegs like crisp packets on a little line. I'm like, what is that? What is that? Who's got time to peg crisp packets? I, I I'm like speechless. Like who <laughs> does that? Who would do that? I don't you know. literally need to be spending every minute of every day organizing your home. And some yeah. people do, you know what I mean? Yeah. Some people do, and that's fine. That's and what makes you tick, go for it. But what we're saying is not that you shouldn't do that, but that we want you to evaluate why you're in our world and what it is that you're wanting to learn here. Yeah. And, you know, if you are at that that kind of organized end of it, fantastic. But if not, and you've, you're like, oh, but yeah, I did think about doing the decanting thing or I did the hanging up of the crisp packets like Stacey on Sort Your Life Out TV show last week. Um, but actually, I haven't really done my dumping ground or my kitchen is bulging at the seams. Then you just need to rethink it a little bit. Yeah. So listeners, you need to tell us, have you identified any organizational tips and tricks out there that just don't work? And what are you going to change about how you organize your home? Let us know. You can leave us a comment on our YouTube channel. And oh my gosh, everybody's been leaving comments. And we love it, don't we, Leslie? We yeah. read everything. We try to reply to so many of you that leave us comments because we, we love it. And we appreciate it because it's so nice to hear from you and to get an insight in what you're thinking and what you're doing. So, yeah, let us know if we've given you food for thought, as hopefully we do with each and every episode. I'm going off now to hang up my crisp packet. 
<laughs> I am not. I'm not decanting. As long as I got kids in this house, nothing will be decanted in any but containers. You have to kind of like put like a little. I, I, honestly, you'd have to kind of create some kind of you need wire. To a, to a ten, you need to create a like a shower curtain rod and then put the little things on it with the clips. I mean, Leslie. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like who's got time for that i don't know i don't That's know i think uh, you might i love stacy but come on stacy that was just too much yeah too much. <laughs> was it it was stacy solomon who did yeah. that right yeah yeah, yeah. i think but a lot of people in... around the world who were like who's stacy solomon so stacy solomon has got a tv show here in the uk which is brilliant actually and she is yeah. great um so a lot of it she gets right but some of the organizational hacks are a little bit yeah, I think it's season one. I think uh, I think she did that in season one. And I think everybody went, I don't know what she's doing, but we're not hanging up crisps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to this episode. We hope you've enjoyed it. Give us a thumbs up or give us a comment. Click on follow and follow our show because we've got a brand new episode out every Friday. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks so much for listening to the Declutter Hub podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to us in your podcast player so you don't miss an episode and we'll see you next week.